Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our series of Azure Active Directory. And in this video, we are going to talk about a new feature that has been recently introduced and it's been named as administrative units. So the core agenda of this video will be knowing what is administrative units, how to create them, whether there is any license requirement for this or not, then what are the PowerShell commands available as of now to manage administrative units what is the use case and what could be the benefits of using administrative units now the concept or the logic on behalf of which this feature has been designed it is not new we have been doing it from a long time but now it is available with azure active directory as well now this actually applies to those organization which believe in distributive framework of access control now if you guys remember what we were doing is we were confining the domain admin privileges on a specific set of OUs or domains we have been doing this from a long time similarly the roles which exist in Azure Active Directory can also be confined to a specific set of users so in a nutshell if we talk about definition delegation of roles as per locations and business unit is what you can do from administrative units it is a licensed feature and it requires azure active directory premium license so as i have addressed before this applies to those enterprises which believe in distributed framework of access control think about a scenario wherein you have a help desk team located in different part of the world right and in a nutshell, what will happen that if I have a user admin role assigned to one of my admin, then this particular admin can actually customize all the attributes that are related to all these user objects, irrespective of location. But what happens with administrative units, if you have assigned a specific role to a specific set of user, it can only control the attributes or it can only do the modification of the scoped audience. So in this case, the user admin, which is dedicated for, let's say the US location, will only be able to customize the account details related to the help desk admin, which are in US. And the same process goes for India as well. So if you will look, or if you will observe this particular section, what we have as of now, is a group of users which is our targeted audience then they may belong to a specific department they may be working in a specific location and then to manage these kind of users we have a specific admin and that's exactly the purpose of administrative units so what we'll do is we'll group the users we'll keep them in an administrative unit it will be a sort of container that will contain Azure AD resources. Then we'll align a specific permission to a particular admin, and then that admin can only control these set of users for which the permission is confined. So this was all about knowing how the theoretical part of administrative unit works. Now let me switch to my browser where I have signed in as global admin. And this is the option that I'm referring to. Now, if you guys have logged into Azure portal lately, you might have seen this option. And this option does get reflected when you open a user object as well. So let's say I go to user and I open one of my user. As you can see, administrative unit is getting listed here. So let's proceed by creating one of the administrative units for which we'll scope the privilege. But before we do that, I'll just quickly take a dump of my Azure Active Directory and, and I will show you what exactly I'm going to do. Okay. So as of now, I have signed into Azure AD PowerShell and what I have done is I have queried a list of users who have uh, a designation, let's say IT help desk and who work for India location, just for an example. So now what we will do is we will choose this user, which is named as enter to be the admin, to be the user admin of a particular administrative units. And in that administrative unit, we'll add these three users. Then what will be the expected behavior that if enter will try to make any change for user 10, 13 or 16, 
he will be able to do it but if he tries to make any change for let's say user 28 or user 31 then he will not be able to do it so i'll come back to my portal and i have clicked on administrative units after going to azure active directory and now i'm going to click on add i'm just going to name this admin unit let's say it help desk and in the description you can type anything whatever you want so i'll keep it let's say test and then i'll click on add now once you add administrative unit as of now it has just been created now the next step is to add the members so if we talk about our powershell or the set of users which we were supposed to add it was user 10 13 and 16 so what i'll do is i'll search for user 10 then i'll search for user 13 and then i will search for user 16 okay and i'll click on select so as of now this administrative unit has three members if you want you can add group as well now there is one more thing which you will experience in terms of uh, the options that are available for users you have this option which says bulk add or bulk remove but for group it has not been introduced yet but it does support adding groups manually so you can click on this and then select your respective groups and get them added now i have an admin unit it contains members as well now what i can do is i can just assign a particular role to a specific user now as of now administrative units will only offer you to add these many roles so what i'll do is i'll click on user admin and then i'll select my account which was named as enter i'll select this account and then i'll click on add that's all i have done as of now and what exactly has been done an admin unit has been created it has members and there is a specific role that's been assigned to one of the user now what I'll do is I'll sign in to my browser with the account which is named as enter and then we'll try making changes. So this is the browser where I'm going to sign in with my account which is enter and once I'm signed in I'll open both the kind of users and do different tabs and then let's see what all we can do. So I've typed in my username and then I'll type in my password and then I'll click on yes. So I'll land up to the default console of portal.azure.com from where we can actually make changes. So now once this web page is loaded, I'll click on Azure Active Directory and then I'm going to click on users. And the targeted users are user 10, 13 and 16. So what I'll do is I'll try to search one of the user, which is let's say user 10. And if I click on this particular user, as you can see this edit option is enabled for me and I can make changes let's say in the first name I have mentioned test and if I'll click on save this change will be saved but now let's see what happens if I try to use any other user or let's say if I try to make change to one of the user for which this enter account permission is not being scoped so i'll close this user 10 i'll again go to azure active directory and then i'll click on users and i'll choose some random user let's say user 19. and now as you can see this edit option is not enabled okay but if i go to user 10 and if i close this as you can see this edit option is enabled now the reason behind this is very simple because user 10 exist in that administrative units for which i have assigned enter as a user admin and that's the only reason why the account enter can make changes to this particular user object now this was all about knowing how to manage administrative units from the console but there are certain commands which are available from powershell as well and if you want to check them you can just run this command and as of now as you can see we have some of the commands which are available which will help you to add unit member create or remove but as of now powershell 
does not have the capability to add a role member that means wherein you are defining a particular permission it will be released for sure in future if microsoft is planning but since this is very new or this is just which has been made public for preview as well so as of now the features are very limited so let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed we have discussed about administrative units how to create them what are the license requirements powershell commands the use case wherein your organization believes in a distributed framework of access control and for sure there are many benefits of using this kind of feature wherein an admin can not cross or make the changes for the audience for which it has been restricted so if you guys have learned something new please feel free to subscribe and if you think this channel is helping you to learn new technologies please share this with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time